Yes, America, there she goes, your ideal. do make all those noises over there, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> With the screen, instant replay, and other technical first. The program voted number one by the Wrestling Writers Federation. Join us now for a fast-paced competition of professional wrestling. Well, did you find any tweets in any of the comments? Hey, these guys... I noticed uh, what I can see at TV, I've been able to watch. I've noticed that we've had interference, that we come out here and say we're going to have one match, and then sometimes somebody would arrange for it to be another match, and I'm just arranging right now for it to be a match with me and Olympia. Hey. Right. Okay. Oh, commentating this match. Robert Fuller is uh, in our... If somebody could uh, challenge her. All right, Mr. Olympia, if you're watching on the monitor in the back, you have been openly challenged by Robert Fuller. He's in the ring right now. Let's uh, go up there and see if we can get any kind of... I don't see anybody accepting any challenges. So. Let me tell you something about him. That's his story. He can come out here and talk his stinking lies or what he can do or what he has done. That's garbage when you ain't beat nobody in the first place. I'm going to hang around here. ain't going nowhere. And when you show your face, I'm going to be looking at it, Buster. Well, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Wait a minute. Here you go. Well, you got nothing to say. You got a bunch of big books, Wait a minute. Fuck. Begins to open, catches El Lobo, Robert Fuller now, well he's got what he wants. I don't like these odds though, son. And Robert Fuller, and keeping this El Lobo from entering the ring, Olympia and Fuller still have it one-on-one -on -one in the center of the ring. Fuller going for the abdominal stretch, has it clamped what appears to be very well. There you see the Canadian Lumberjack coming out of the ring, there you see the interference now taking Robert Fuller up, Powell Driver with the assistance of Mr. Olympia, and uh, Mr. Olympia now going for that figure four leg lock that he is uh, very good at, and now applying the pressure, and here we see that leg of Joe Ledoux coming across the uh, head and uh, throat area of Robert Fuller. So uh, this man that Mr. Olympia said... Actually, Joe blindsided. One thing LaDuke said, the mystery man, so to speak, is that he had his last match with me. This could be his last match, too, because what they're forgetting is the stipulations. No time limit. We can fight all night in Mobile if we want to. No disqualification. We can jack jaws, kick junk butts. We can do anything we want to do. And I got two men here who've got a lot to settle, and we're going to settle it in Mobile Tuesday night. Only this time won't be no blindside. Nose to nose, toes to toes, and jack and jaws. And uh, we'll see the outcome. Six-man challenge. No time. No disqualification. This trio. Yeah, mystery, all right. We're going to solve the mystery in Mobile. Bring your lumberjack home. Out with his personality profile, and it was uh, packed full of uh, mostly lies. He said he put Austin Idol to sleep. Let's watch the videotape. Let's see what happens. Mr. Olympia had this tape stopped uh, before this point. As you can see, a universal heartthrob definitely not out. Uh, in fact, both men now are on the canvas. Uh, it looks like Olympias is just as in sad shape as uh, Austin Idol was. Uh, also, Mr. Olympia made some comments about a Canadian lumberjack match. He was not even involved in that match, or supposed to be. And uh, also, uh, the television match that he said came from Pittsburgh. Uh, I believe it came from uh, our southeastern television studios, as you can see. And uh, there again, you saw the double teaming on the end of his bout with Tim Horner. And this is uh, some of the dialect that occurred between Brenda and the fans. <laughs> yeah, and 
interesting conversation. Brenda Lightfoot and the fans. Officials say they have banned Brenda because they fear for her safety. You can see why. But TV10 has learned the ban will be lifted Tuesday night. She'll be at ringside, and if she is, we'll be there to capture her. All the action, I'll tell you, Glenn, that's one sport where the uh, action is better outside the ring than it is in, in the ring. Uh, I'm going to have to do something about this. Bob Armstrong uh, pulling off a coat here at the ringside, knowing about this interference thing. He comes in the ring, swinging a miss by this. Armstrong going after something with Leduque has in his hand, that belt. That's what it is. El Lobo now working over Armstrong. The mask of Super Olympia almost coming off. And Leduc begins his... Wait a minute. Robert Fuller just comes by, hits like this. And now he goes after... Oh, Leduc goes out. Robert Fuller, there's the mask off of... There's Jerry Stubbs in the ring. And he is going at the eyes and face. He's the one I put the stuff in his eyes. It's not supposed to come back. He's coming back like a man from the living dead. He comes in here. We pile drive him. I put my hole on him. You promised me, Joe. You promised me he wasn't coming back. Now I got to go mask versus mask against Super Olympia. Let's have him ring. I'm guaranteeing you he's not going to show up. He's not going to be in no deal. I guarantee you that. You told me that. I'm coming back to guarantee. Say that to the back. Okay. I got some film on it. Well, if you'd please, Charlie, roll the film. Let's take a look. Going to the arena now here in the southeastern wrestling area. Canadian Lumberjack rules. You'll note right. wrestlers around the ring. At this time, I want to tell the people that I'm coming, and I'm coming strong. But there's one thing I can't figure out. Is every time I got in the ring with Lobo, see, as you can see, I've got him going pretty good. Yeah. Set him up. Set him up for my drop kick. And I caught him good this time. And he, there you go. And I'll tell you, he was out right there. He didn't see nothing. Awesome. But I'll be honest, too, though. I didn't see nothing there. I didn't see. And look at his foot. He's putting something on his foot. I can't see nothing. I wonder what's going on. And that was the last of me for now, anyway. And there you see. Okay, uh, okay Charlie. Right here. I want to thank Super O. I would have feared, but Charlie, I saw what happened to the man. I do want to thank him for coming in and helping me. But I'm telling you what, Stubbs. Lobo, I'm going to get you, and I'm going to finish you off. And Stubbs, I got an eye on you, and you can take my word. I'm going to oh, so you, Stubbs. For a no-DQ match. Well, I'm going to tell you why, Stubbs, I asked for a no-DQ match. It's because I'm going to get rid of you, Lobo. I'm going to take care of you and get rid of you once for all. And I'm gonna put that lie detector on you, Stubbs, because every time you come out here, you say some lies, but I'm not gonna tell the people that. I'm gonna let them see it on the BTRs, on TV, how much you lie and contra lie yourself. But when I get to you, Stubbs, and I'm sure I won't have to because Super Olympia's gonna take care of you, but if he doesn't, I'm after you. And you just be watching on your tail. People saw what you done to me. What goes around comes around, big boy, and I'm gonna be there to do it. A lot of happenings Tuesday night. Mobile's Expo Hall, Alabama title, Olympia against Super Olympia, Rougeau against El Lobo, no disqualification, including that uh, steel cage match, the Armstrongs against Express, Tuesday night, 8 o'clock in Expo. A uh, very important upcoming match in the arena. That is that steel cage match when all six men, Randy Rose, Ron Starr, Honky Tonk, Wayne Ferris, will be in the ring against uh, the Armstrongs, Bob, Brad, and Scott. And something very interesting has been added to the steel cage match, gentlemen, as you know, a stipulation in which uh, it could be the end of one of these teams as far as six men. Be the end of, Charlie. Don't play with the people. Go ahead and tell them what it's all about. The team that loses can no longer wrestle as a six-man tag team. Well, just stop and look back, people. Look here. You see who I got sitting next to me here? My cousin right here, he and a couple other guys came in here a little while back. How successful were they? We wreaked havoc, didn't we, baby? <laughs> Give that money. I Everybody right now is turning on the TV and saying, Daddy, Mama, Uncle, Aunt, Sister, Brother, turn on TV and express his own. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And do you think that we're going to let these people down, Charlie Platt, by splitting no up way. as a team? No way in Hades, no way. baby. No way. There put us in a cage. Put us where you want, but don't just put us anywhere. Put us inside the cage. 
and we'll get it done. I'll tell you what, before we go any further, we have some videotaped highlights of a recent match that you gentlemen had with the Armstrongs. Let's go to the arena right now and yeah, uh, pick up the action. You can see how it starts out already. You see who's got them going. Right. The Express is rolling down the track. Daddy. All three of the Armstrongs laying around. Look at here. Here comes Honky Tonk off to do a little number right here. There goes one of them down. These guys never had a chance, Charlie. And now, now they want to come in and tell us that they want a six men in the cage and the losers can't wrestle this tag team anymore. How stupid can these guys be, Charlie? How stupid uh, can they be? Tell me. Well, uh, see what I happened. think uh, it's come to a situation with the Armstrongs, and uh, I almost believe it has with you, too, that yeah. you're tired of uh, having to What's face these right gentlemen. Now? now, I've got something I want to show you right here, show you just what kind of people they are. Here it is, a handful of powder, a handful of salt. My cousin is down. We're doing the thing, and what do you see right here? The big, bad kendo stick. Charlie, tell me something, buddy. Tell me if I'm wrong. Was it that kendo stick outlawed? Didn't the commission say they couldn't bring it back in the ring? Oh, sure well, you know what happened after this, Charlie? You just keep your eyes open here. He thinks he's out here at batting practice. Look at him. Got this kendo stick going crazy with it. They think that's the thing to do. When they can't handle us any other way, they bring in the kendo sticks. There's three of them, and don't forget the Super Olympia on the outside. That makes four of them. Let me tell you something, Charlie. Speaking. Accusations have been made before that we brought a blackjack in. I was about to Yeah, I that believe was not I remember true. that. Everybody thought it was, but we knocked them out with Dukes. Mother's thumb and four dollars. We knocked them right out with yeah. them, baby. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else. The Armstrongs got a little lucky. They brought their stick. It took four men, a stick and a handful of powder that Arms, uh, Scott Armstrong had in his hand right. to beat the Express. Now, if you think you're going to put us in a cage and bring sticks, Four men and powder, then you're all wrong, Charlie Platt. That's what, what I think, think it's all about, Daddy. I no. think that videotape uh, kind of told its own it's story as to who no, brought every what in the. tells a story. That's right. You know, a honky tonk man, he came way down here because he likes six. He likes six man tag. He likes six eggs over easy. I like six filet mignons. I got six ex wives. I love six. And I'm not going to stand by and let the Armstrongs change anything about that six man. They're not going to stop the Midnight Express from rolling because the Honky Tonk Man owns part of Midnight Express, just like Randy Rose, just like Ron the Star. And we're not going to give up our possessions, Bob Armstrong. You know, there's something wrong with you. You're crazy. You're a crazy man because a man's got to be crazy to put his two punk kids in the ring <laughs> with three rough, tough wrestlers. And all I can say, Bob, is when we beat y'all, one, two, three, that's it. No more Armstrongs. No more three-man Armstrongs. It's just going to be Midnight Express, baby. Honky-tonking, <laughs> balling, and squalling, and climbing the wall. It's Woo! Bad self, honky-tonk. Go with your bad self. That's right. That's right. We can go high on bald heads. We can stand us. <laughs> Put us off a peg legs, and the secret to walking on water is knowing where to rock. That's exactly right, Charlie. Can't do it. Baby. Well, one thing for sure: when these two teams meet in the arena, they will be in the steel cage. And I heard they Bill after all the magazines are coming down from out of the woodwork. They're coming down from everywhere, Chicago, and New York. They're going to see the Armstrongs. Yeah. Express against the Armstrongs. One in the end. The match of the year is called by many of the wrestling magazines the Armstrongs against ready, the Express boy. in I'm the ready, steel ready, cage. Ready, 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 ready. Let's go for it. Sports for bringing all the competition and especially this Northwest Championship belt from Florida because the more championships you got, the more competition you got. And Lobo, I got you in the first round, so we'll see you then, big boy. Super Olympia, big tournament tomorrow night. Charlie, I just want to let everybody know I'm going to be in the tournament. I want the money. I'm here just for the titles and the cash. That's the reason I came. I just want to let everybody know, especially you, Randy Rose. And uh, hats off International Sports Incorporated, like Jacques Rougeau said, for making this uh, title available. Bob Armstrong, you'll be in competition. That's exactly right. The biggest thing's had the Pensacola in quite a while, and I got the man with the mask, Mr. O Olympia right off the bat. A lot of matches, probably the most important night for Pensacola because this trophy is lovely and three thousand dollars makes it even gravy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this tag match one fall with television time remaining. Now entering the ring, the team of Tim Horner and Larry Hamilton, their opponents, the Midnight Express Incorporated. And uh, the Express, as always, controversial figures here in the southeastern wrestling area. And 
out on the floor sitting this, this one out will be the latest addition to the Express. The Honky Tonk Man, Wayne Barris. Well, there's some great talent right there, Charlie. Former World Junior Heavyweight Champion in green, Ron Stark. And the other one's got the experience and the determination. I see uh, Honky Tonk Wayne Ferris is, uh, he, he's not there today, is he, Charlie? He's not there. No, he uh, seems to be uh, cheering on his team, though. Star having his problems with the U.S. Junior Heavyweight Champion taken down by the hair. Drag his favorite Rose. Good arm drag take down on Randy Rose and locks up that uh, arm of Rose. I can see right now them boys have been hanging out with the Armstrongs. They're breaking every rule in the book, Dick Steinborn. They're trying everything they can to win this match, but I promise you they're not going to. And Armstrong, if you're listening back there, you better have them top kids yours ready because they're going to get worked over. He laid down some rules and regulations, doesn't he? Oh, yes. Uh, the man that will speak whatever uh, might pop into his mind. But uh, quite an effective man in that uh, ring, though. Wayne Ferris, the latest addition to the Midnight Express. And uh, watch this. Uh, watch this. Drop kick, you don't expect it from a man of the Midnight Express. Tom Bates out. Bates, the former amateur state champion in Florida. Turned professional three and a half years ago. Now making a name for himself. But caught in the grips of the Midnight Express in their corner. Larry Hamilton now uh, taking a whole lot. I think Tom Bates, my era. Larry Hamilton. Always. Ron Starr now coming in. Tag is made again with Rose. Always watch the Express. In and out, in and out. Uh, no one member of the Express unless he is in extreme trouble stays in that ring at the time, Dick. Barrett, the traffic here. Tell me just what to do. Rose is on the floor. Hamilton is caught up in midair by Ron Starr. Catches him on the neck, drives him down with Starr on top. He got caught in that corner. Pay the price. There they are. Using whatever tactics it takes, but uh, one of the most effective combinations in all of pro wrestling, the Midnight Express Incorporated. Your winners of the match. And we'll be back with more of Southeastern Television Wrestling in just a moment. Look at that and the grandma and the rest of them that came. We left them laying in the ring, too. Laying flat. And let's take another trip on back to the Express is the best at these kind of matches. Six man tornado street fight. Tom Jones hospitalized. Brad Armstrong one time in Mobile hospitalized. Jimmy Golden hospitalized. We hospitalized so many people, they made us honorary candy stripers over there in Mobile. And let me tell you something, Mobile, Alabama. When the Express comes down there, you'll think Tornado Frederick was coming through. Wait till you see Hurricane Express. Mm. Midnight Express Incorporated, and certainly you're no stranger to this type of match with the Express, Brad. You know, Charlie, the last street fight we had there in Mobile was a little rough, and things got wild and out of hand, and Willie, and there was only four men in the ring then. Well, it's going to be six this time, and I can't imagine what's going to happen, but we're going to go in there wide open, and we ain't backing up a step. Scott? We got the bullet with us this time. It's street fight. Anything can happen. We may all go to the hospital, but I promise you, we won't be riding alone. You know, it's finally come down to this. There's been people running in. They've given me a concussion, had me walking sideways for two days. When this is a six-man tornado street fight rules, that means everybody's in there at the same time. We can wear our booty-kicking boots, our old T-shirt, street fighting boots, whatever we want to wear. And like they said, there's been a lot of people hospitalized in Mobile, and there could be a lot more. But one thing about it, we're going to start dead even, nose to nose and toes to toes. And like you said, Charlie, anything will go, anything we want to bring. And I ain't going to be the last one concussed either. There's going to be some more people walking sideways. 
talking about candy stripes and everything. That's the only thing you're going to be able to suck on is a candy cane because with no teeth, it's really hard to chew. And when this match is over, brother, there's going to be a nuts on heads from head to toe because I'm tired of getting my head beat on in Mobile. We'll be ready. <laughs> from Mesa, Arizona. Bell sounds we're ready for action, Dickie. I believe the lady in the ring is uh, officially called a valete. Not a valet. Va valete. Valete. All right, I think that was originated by the original gorgeous George, and he had uh, a manservant come to the ring for many, many years. And later in his career, he took on that lady, and they originated the word and, and put it in some legal areas as valete. Okay. We're ready for action, uh, the Valete, uh, now cheering on her man, the Hustler Rip Rogers. Look at Lucas down on the mat here. Oh, hi, hits on. Good move by Luke. Hard to sit down by Ken Lucas. And uh, wait a minute, boy, you got to fire up Ken Lucas, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, Charlie, he does not like. He doesn't like a woman standing at ringside, let alone uh, a manager of the opposite sex show. Uh, the Valete now saying that Lucas pulls the tide. You know, in Ken's professional career, he can always, he's always been nicknamed as a macho person. You know, a tough street fighter, uh, a tough guy. <laughs> Indeed he is. Uh, Ken, Lucas. Ken, I've noticed, uh, obviously, an extensive training has trimmed down, uh, taken off uh, quite a few pounds. Told me that uh, he feels better in the lighter weight in the ring. Good shoulder smash. Oh, good. And it appears that uh, trimming down is uh, added to the speed of Ken Lucas. He told me he trained uh, uh, for about a week and a half because he knew some six-man tags were coming up. And he would... Uh, you have to tag in and out fast. You know, you have to get your weight down when you're in six-man tags. They're, they're quite tough on your system. Out of that head, Susan. Penny Lucas. He calls this Lucas country. That it is. Wait a minute, Ken. Ken now uh, pointing a finger to the valete at ringside and said, why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> uh, Headlock by Rip Rogers on Lucas. There it is. There it is. That, you know, you can't help but realize why does this man have this woman out? You saw them. She got the referee's attention and Don went to hear on Lucas, and this is Rip Rogers' MO. Good arm. Get the fight out of it. If that distraction wasn't there, but you got a license. At least you should be sitting in a chair. Exactly. Good move by uh, Lucas complaining once again that uh, the tights were full. Look at Ken. Look at Ken. Then he's ready to wind up. He's got him going. That's all he needs is like a bar. Start hollering and you're going to do something. And uh, he blocked it. Keep it back. Powerful shot of that missile. Oh, I reversed me. I've never seen that. He reversed it. He didn't put it the other way that he should have. Brought the man on the wrong side and 
give him a reverse knee. And uh, Mr. Rogers seems to find comfort over in that turnbuckle, but only uh, momentarily. Ken Lucas taking this match to uh, the Hustler Rip Rogers. I can tell you one thing, they're evenly matched. Experience-wise, offensive defense. This even, here comes the slam. Here comes the distraction. They got put a spin on the rope. Complain to the referee. Didn't work that time. Ken caught the situation, put a kick into uh, Rogers, and uh, he's wearing the system. He's cranking up again. There's that look at Stewart. Got an elbow sitting in the ring. It's uh, Rogers raking at the eyes, apparently, what it seemed to be to me, of Ken Lucas Rogers with the elbow to the chest area. Rogers down for the pin. One, two, and oh. Ken Lucas powers out on the count of two. Well, that's the first pinfall we had tried. Oh, oh. That's there. it. That's it for Rogers. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. Lucas coming out in blue. Lucas uh, being stretched by uh, the balance. Lucas now firing back against Rip Rogers. We have a count out on the floor. Rip Rogers being very slammed. Oh! the floor by Lucas and uh, Rogers crawling back over to the dressing area. Ken Lucas is one hot individual I think would be throwing out. Uh, no match. Uh, okay, uh, Ken. I've never seen a situation like that uh, take place before. Charlie, I have respect for anybody. And I have a lot of respect for women. But any time that a woman puts herself in a man's place, she's looking for trouble. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I don't mind wrestling Rip Rogers. But I don't want his valet or his broad or his girl, or whoever it be, out at ringside. Because I know one thing for sure. It's hard enough to win matches anyway. And I want to be a winner, not a loser. But I want her taken away, and I'll meet him anytime, any place. Simple enough. Fair enough. That's um, well, well put. Okay, Ken Lucas. Uh, you are upset good. and rightfully so about uh, what we just saw here on television. Uh, a lot of action still to come on today's edition of Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Right now, it's time. For A great act, Wrestler Rip Rogers. That's right, Wrestler Rip Rogers and his valet, Miss Tenderfoot. She's kind of a jack of all trades. She sprays the ring for germs before he enters. And she even sprays the referee. She combs his hair so he looks up pretty before doing battle. And she even protects him. In this case, from uh, Ken Lucas. Keep her up there, buddy. And when he gets hurt, watch this. A little pat. A little tender love and care. Oh, did it hurt you, poor baby. She spends the rest of the time inciting the crowd, distracting the ref, so Rip can do illegal things in the ring. She's got a great act. And, of course, when uh, Rip Rogers loses, she's right there to give the old chicken dance to the winner. Miss Tenderfoot, a good act. Don't miss her next Tuesday night at Expo Hall. <laughs> Television wrestling with split screen, instant replay, and other technical first. The program voted number one by the Wrestling Writers Federation. Join us now for a fast-paced competition of professional wrestling, featuring the top stars from the world's largest governing body, the National Wrestling Alliance. On Tuesday nights, when the wrestlers invade Mobile, here's the outfit of the night. I love this, folks. Kind of a gold LeMay evening gown. Worn by Rip Rogers. Look at the uh, nice-looking slits up the side. And it gets better when he takes it off. Look at this. Ooh, nice little shuffle there. Hot pink trunks with matching knee pads and pink shoes. Oh, good-looking outfit. Here's the uh, kick of the night. Tim Horner to the head of Chip Donovan. Now watch Donovan. 
Oh, boy, you can tell that one really hurt. Nice fake by Donovan. Now we're going to show you <laughs> the best move of the night, Randy Rosen Black. Watch this. He's going to play uh, leapfrog right here with Brad Armstrong. Those guys are pretty flexible. Tough Guy of the Week award goes to Chick Donovan, who hot puts it to the locker room. He doesn't want any part of Tim uh, Horner. Uh, actually, that's the Chicken of the Week award, I guess. And the Good Sport of the Week is a member of the Midnight Express who hits Bob Armstrong right here in the stomach with a club and then hits the referee over the head with a club, the TV-10 uh, Good Sport of the Week from Expo Hall. With split screen, instant replay, and other technical firsts. The program voted number one by the Wrestling Writers Federation. Join us now for a fast-paced competition of professional wrestling, featuring the top stars from the world. At this point, should have been somewhere around 35 to 40 minutes wrestling. He's a very defensive wrestler, but like I say, he's rushing his style a little bit. And he had me going pretty good. He wants to win very badly because now he's the one that's got to beat me for my title. It's not like wrestling him for the world title because he is world champion no longer. Harley Race has that title and he's in a hurry to get it. He's making a few mistakes as you can see here. He had me going. We were both sweating profusely. I, I, he was real slick. He was hard to get a hold of because we wrestled so long. So here you see I almost got him in a sunset flip and he's trying to fight out of it now. I'm trying to muscle him back down and get the count, and he's trying his best to reach that rope and get it, but he got off balance here, and you're going to see I get a near fall right here. I finally got him on his back, and I almost got the three count right here, but he kicked out. Very close. Very close, close count. It was a very close count. It was a near fall. I almost had it, but, you know, I was just kind of laying back and playing his game because in this match, I was a champion. I was a Southeastern champion. He was after my back. So, you know, I, I have to apologize for some of the things I did because... You know, you got the Jackson jaw sometime. You can take just so much, and you're going to have to fight fire with fire. And he did some things unbecoming of a champion, so I did them right back to him. I was doing them to others. I was letting him do it first, but I wasn't the last one going to be hurt, I can tell you that. He got really rough here. Like I said, we were both sweating like the devil. He's got a super chop here. He likes to took my head off with that, put me right on the flat of my back. Is but he still I, in great condition, Bob? He's in super condition. I could tell that. I could still feel the power and the strength after 40 minutes of wrestling. He felt just like he did when we started, only he was perspiring heavily, just like I was. Well, what you did was you really sent him off someplace else to fight another victim that he might be able to wrestle with. That's right. He's going to have to go somewhere else. He came here to get my title, put him in the driver's seat to wrestle race, and he didn't get my title. So he's got to go somewhere else now. Right there, you can see he almost had me beat. It was a tough battle up and down, but, you know, I get to feeling bad and had the wind took out of me, I hear somebody on that front row say, come on, Bob, and by God, I'm going to do it for them and me too. Now, right here, I didn't know which way he was going. I felt like I was on Mars somewhere, and when he dropped me, I wished I was on Mars because it took all the air out of me. Remember, strong. It must have been about eight or nine feet coming down, hit that mat that very hard. This is one of his favorite maneuvers, too. He beat a lot of uh, Exactly right. Here you see he went for that famous figure four lead lock, and I hooked him right there, one, two, three. And that was it. And the nature boy, Ric Flair, had to go elsewhere. He didn't get the Southeastern title. He'll have to go somewhere, get somebody else's title so he can meet Harley Race. I was real happy about it. I want to thank everybody that backed me up. It was probably one of the most important matches of my professional career. I'm still the champion, and I'm going to do my dead level best to remain the champion. Okay. Bullet power. All right. All right. We're going to get you to come out a little bit later on and take a look at some film uh, involving the Midnight Express if you can come back out and be my pleasure. All right. A lot of action coming your way in the next hour. And, uh, you know, taking a look at uh, that move that, uh, coming out of that figure four, it, uh, it seems that Bullet Bob and everyone who uh, has been around professional wrestling knows a lot of Flair's moves. I think the old bullet had that one uh, in store for Mr. I Flair when he went for that I figure four. It was a great count. I've never seen that before. It happened once before in Miami when I think uh, Terry Funk defeated Jack Briscoe in Miami. Same maneuver. I'll exactly tell you what, uh, Bullet Bob uh, had it in for uh, Mr. Flair and a great win for Bob. Let's go to the ring right now. Our first match in the ring. Uh, introducing from Marietta, Georgia, the Southeastern Tag Team Champions, the Armstrong Brothers, Brad and Scott. Their opponents today, from the state of Georgia, Ted Allen. His partner from Australia, Sir Norman Frederick Charles III. Tag team action here today, Charlie, and uh, a lot of experience in the ring and a lot of youthfulness. All right, here we go, Brad Armstrong and Ted Allen. Allen's very aggressive. Oh, a switch, nice switch. Takes his man over with that arm, controls him. In 
to a scissor and out. You know what we were uh, talking about a moment ago? Uh, Super Olympia team. Me and like to uh, remind the wrestling fans about uh, an upcoming match in the arena, Dickey, and uh, it will be a non-sanctioned match, meaning, uh, meaning by that that... Uh, Very dangerous matches when you have a non-sanctioned Well, no governing body of professional wrestling is uh, putting their seal or approval behind this. Right. Uh, neither the National Wrestling Alliance Southeastern Championship Wrestling or its uh, parent... Uh, Company International Sports Incorporated, uh, the blindfold match. In this situation that uh, goes back on television a few weeks when Robert Fuller was blinded, a lot of uh, bad blood, shall we say, between he and Mr. Olympia. What you're saying is Olympia came out here and dropped his mask. I put it on. You cannot see through it. It's, it's got double lining in it. So he's actually asking Robert Fuller and his state right at this time, if he cannot see very well, to put this mask on and he's wearing a mask and all that, he's going to blindfold it. Are you saying that? That's what we have coming up in the arena. You'll know, Dickie, there's one hole in the mask for the mouth uh, so that uh, breath can be obtained. You can breathe through this one hole in the mask, and that's it. You, you cut off as far as uh, right. sight is concerned. I know that Scott Armstrong was doing some nice arm drags there. He's in the ring with Norman Frederick Charles III at this particular moment. Well, you can say one thing about the Australians recently winning that that, uh, <laughs> that, that race on, with, with the ship. The uh, former American Cup is that right. what it was. Right, I understand that he sailed every four or five years, and it's the first time in over 130 years that Australia takes that, that uh, victory back to Australia. And Norman Charles was bragging in the dressing room that his life will change now also, and his ability will change in the ring, too. Okay, that uh, remains to be seen. A good move by Mr. Allen going around uh, to that hammerlock, bringing up, coming up under his man for the play. Good reversal by Scott Armstrong. <laughs> Elbow into the side and a flying mare. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that hurt. Especially when you least expect it, Charlie. Now the boy's hurt. He's hurt bad. He better get to that corner and tag out. Well, he's there. Smart thinking by Scott Armstrong. Brad's in. Oh, oh, blow. Side of the head. Brad Armstrong takes Charles in. Good drop kick. Perfect drop kick. Right up in the air, and he hits control over his feet and places them where he wants to place them. He can put it in your eye, on your chin, on your shoulder. When you're up that high, you have those knees bent just slightly. You can control your force. Side headlock by Norman Frederick Charles tags in Ted Allen. Good right connection to the midsection by Allen. Slows up Brad again. Allen making that connection. Now beginning to uh, come to life in offense against Brad Armstrong. Allen takes his man out to center the ring, right to the uh, right to the chin. High running drop by Ted Allen. Covers his man, uh, not quite enough to put Brad Armstrong out to tag his name with uh, Norman Frederick Charles. Brad scrambles, makes the tag with Scott. Scott comes in. I know they've got one of the iron bars fell from underneath the ring on that backdrop. Uh, referee Larry Brock has the score now. All four men in the ring at the same time. Loosen up that ring, Tom. Those ropes are kind of loose, and that one iron bar is laying down. He's calling for an elbow. Oh, and he let him have with a front elbow. I would have thought there'd been a side elbow. Beautiful drop kick by Scott Armstrong. Allen goes out on the floor. Back drop. Scott right into his man again. What a nice drop kick. That's two beautiful drop kicks by young man. Cat in that corner, waiting. My goodness. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's been practicing. <laughs> he has really come a long way. That's the first time I've seen him drop kick. And I will say they're almost perfect. I think enough for a window. You're right. Uh, takes the wind out of Sir Norman Frederick Charles III, and uh, your winner of the match. Oh, and Bob, it must do you proud. Feel real good about watching my boys, especially winning. I've taught them that you know, if you win is not everything. It's how you play the game. But brother, when you can play the game right and win too, there's no better feeling. Right. Now you know, a while ago we saw when I beat Rick Flair, which I'm very proud of. Congratulations, boys. Good win. Very good. Very good.
Very good. I want to kind of show you what happened a little later on. You know, Rick Flair was in kind of cahoots with the Express there, and they had made certain statements that I statement no secret the passage. So I would like to put on film now exactly what they did. Now the match was over when this happened. I'll show you what kind of guts the Express has got anyway if you'd ask him to roll that film. Here they come. Now see this is their favorite pastime, a three-on-one situation. And here's Brother Rick Flair. He's not happy about it either. And you're going to see what happens here. They're going to try to bust me up real good and end up doing just that. This is after that match you had with Flair. That's exactly right. And here they come, the Express and Flair, who seem to form some kind of uh, dastardly partnership, if you'll excuse my expression. And they're doing a job on me, no doubt about it. They want to put me, put me down and hold me down. And that's exactly what they're doing. You can see when I'm going to the top rope now, they're jumping and knocking my brains out. And thank goodness some of my boys were watching and came down. The match was already over. They had no right in the building, uh, in the ringside area for darn sure. And you can see everything's breaking loose. And finally, somebody has to take matters in their own hands. And uh, thank goodness they got them off of me. I'd probably be in the hospital over here today. I feel like I should have been anyway. But you know, there's no saying when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. You got to keep remembering that too. Now, if we can get out of that film, I want to show you what happened a little later. I was out of action. My boys had a match with the Express, and in this film, you're going to see Norvell Austin for the last time because the man's out with a dislocated shoulder, right. and already they brought in Honky Tonk Ferris. Yeah. I saw him last week in the arena. He wasn't even supposed to be there. Sneaked out of the crowd, knocked my running lights, crossed them real good, and I want to show you just what happened on this film right here. You can see them ganging up. Now, you can't see, but in the right of your film, they've both got one of my boys over there trying to knock their brains out. And you just have to fight fire with fire, like I say. So I got the outside man. And what this is going to turn into is one of them old-fashioned Irish Donny books, I believe they call it. Uh, fighting all day and singing on the ground or whatever you want to say about it. But it ended up in the crowd all over the building. And I'll tell you one thing. I I'm really sick and tired of the expressive ways. We're going to put things to a stop. We're going to go with six-man action. It's been coming. So we're going to go, you know, with all six men instead of a two-on-one or a three-on-one situation. We're going to get all the Armstrongs in one bunch. We're going to get all the Express in one bunch. And we're going to get down and get it done. Somebody's going to get hurt, but we're going to see that we ain't the last ones hurt. At least we hope that's the way it happens. They're tough boys, no doubt about it. they got this new man there right away. Norvell Austin's out, and right away, honky talk. But like I said before, they're going to call him Honky Donkey because he's a jackass if I ever saw one, just like the rest of them. This really got out of hand. They were fighting all in the back of the building. So, you know, something's got to come to a, a stop. When things get this out of, out of control, somebody's going to get hurt. I'm hoping it's not one of us. I don't want anybody to think that I'm a, a bad daddy for putting my boys in this situation, but they feel the same way that I do, that we got to put a stop to that. Well, you know, a promoter is a promoter's dream to see something like this because he says this is for the ball on the ring. So you're talking about six-man tag team action coming up. That's exactly right. Armstrong's in the Express. And right today now, because of the new honky-tonk Ferris, Last week, sneaking up. Today, I want him one-on-one, -on -one, Charlie. You get I challenged him one-on-one, -on -one, and I want to ask my boys right now. Boys, just stay out of the action. See that they stay out of the action. Just let me have him one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm going to jack his jaw. <laughs> okay, that'll be our television main event. Bob Armstrong takes on uh, Honky Tonk Wayne Ferris. Well, you're this to you tonight in Mobile. We'll be rushing all six men in the ring at the same time. There will be no disqualification as the Midnight Express Incorporated will face the team of the Armstrongs. Let's hear their comments right now. You know, true to form, the Express went out, and their newest member came from the very depths of the ocean. And we know what lies on the bottom of the ocean. Norvell Austin is gone. They just shelled out the money, and here comes punk rock Wayne Ferris. Pardon me to term an old phrase, skunk rock Wayne Ferris, the man who calls himself honky talk man. Well, brother, I'm tired of you people using me for a batting practice. You know, you hit me in the head with everything. Came right in in Mobile. Yeah, you were smart. You pulled a good one, no doubt about it. But we just lost a battle, not a war. Now the war is on. All six men at the same time in the ring with a no disqualification. Now we're going to see how good your new man is when it's nose to nose, toes to toes, and ain't no sneaking up in the back and cracking me on the head with something and knocking me doopy. You be there in Mobile Tuesday night. Because when the Armstrongs and the Express meet, brother, Mobile will never be the same because the Mobile Bullet and the boys will be there. Bob Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, Bob Armstrong. 
Let me tell you about Bob Armstrong. Bob Armstrong, you said one thing, one thing that's true in that whole interview. You said the Express keeps shelling out the bus and the people keep on coming. Well, Daddy, you right, because I'm going to tell you, as long as we shell out those bucks and keep shelling them out, we got a waiting list about as long as your skinny legs. Now, I'm here to tell you, we beat you right in the middle of the ring last week. We're going to beat you right in the middle this week. Ferris has already proved that he can take up the slack. You know Randy Rose, my cousin, can do the same. And I've proven myself not only to the people in the building, to the fans, to the police, to the wrestlers, to the parking lot attendant, and everybody else there. Mobile's my town. That's the town we're coming into for a six-man tornado match. And that's the town that'll never be the same. Talk about it. <laughs> Bob Armstrong, I didn't hit you or nothing. You lying to them good people in Mobile, Alabama. I came in out to talk to you, and you know I wanted to talk to you. Run, and then I run and I hit you, and I knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> That Jack Rougeau and Jack, uh, you, Jack? there's a lot of uh, great action taking place. I know a very close friend of yours in the very in the arena this week will be putting on this blindfold. Uh, his opponent will be putting on the other, and he'll be stepping into the ring with uh, Mr. Olympia. Talking about Robert Fuller. Well, you know it's going to be uh, <clears throat> something I think that people have been waiting for because something horrible has happened to this wrestling profession and, and things that just happened. I was in Montreal, I was Canadian champion and I want everybody to know that. I dropped that belt to come down here because Robert and I go back a long time and especially when he was teaming up with Joe LaDuke, a lot of horrible things happened to him. People turned on him and people weren't his friend anymore for money reasons and all that. But I just want everybody out there to understand the fact that I was always a close friend of Robert and I'm always gonna stick by him and I'm always gonna be his friend. And now I'd like to show the people about this little low blow that, that's been going wrong and accepting deals from two people at the same time. You know, when you make a bet, you accept one side of the medal. You can't take two sides. And I'd like to show the people what happened when I promised them that I'd beat them up a little bit. All right, uh, you are a special challenge match situation against uh, the man who uh, sold out, uh, shall we say. Uh, money of Mr. Olympia certainly had uh, more influence on this man than uh, revenge to Mr. Olympia by this L. Lobo. Well, L. Lobo was $5,000 richer because of his turn in the coat, so exactly. to speak. Is that why you call him low blow? Well, I call him low blow. I'll tell you why I call him low blow. It's because in boxing, when you do a dirty shot, you give a dirty shot, they call it a low blow. But what he did in wrestling was another low blow. And you know, you take a man that goes under a hood and cannot see nothing. The guy is blind. I'm talking about Robert. The guy's blind, and somebody comes and beat a guy up that can't see nothing. Well, I just want him to understand something that I may go ahead and turn his mask around a little bit and ask him how it feels when I beat him up and he doesn't see anything. Because Robert Fuller has been good to everybody here. And I could, I could prove it myself because I've been here, I was here for a whole year with Robert. And like I said earlier, he went through some rough times with Joe LaDuke turned on him. A lot of guys turned on Robert, but he's still hanging in there. And I'm gonna tell you one thing, if somebody's gonna look after him, I will. And low blow, I don't care because tonight I got a lumberjack match in every town and everywhere I want to go. And anytime you want to, low blow, I'm going to accept the challenge where all my friends are going to be standing outside the ring. And every time you go out of that ring, low blow, like you did right here, I'm going to show you something, low blow. You went on and took a few good shots to me. But when the time was there, we saw who was the man and who wasn't. And I told the people I'd go in there and I'd give him a lesson. And now he just went in there and did what he could and he saw that he couldn't do enough. And I'm gonna show you that I got a lot of reservations in me for that guy because I got a lot of things to give to people around here and to do, especially guys that accept money from one person and go and double cross with the other person by taking the money from a guy that doesn't have no defense at all and no friends. So I'm gonna give him a few of those that are coming up right there. And I'm going to tell you one thing. He was lucky right there because I missed it. I'm going to be honest with the people. I missed it or he wouldn't have been standing up like that. But I'm going to tell you, when I get him in the lumberjack match, when everybody throws him back in the ring, every time he wants to go out, I'm going to catch him with my size 12 in his face. I'm going to bust his nose, take his mask off, and then Mr. Olympia, I'm coming after you because everybody knows me and Mr. Olympia had some loser leave towns here about a year and a half ago and Mr. Jerry Stubbs had to take the road because he wasn't mad enough to stand for what he did. It's, it's all right. I'll tell you one thing, that's one of the prettiest drop kicks I've ever seen where Joe's coming off that Thank top rope. 
All right. Tremendous. There you, see, there you see the situation. Best of luck to you in the lumberjack match. And uh, anytime I get in that ring with Loblo and I got a lumberjack match, you watch it because I'm going to give everything I got, Charlie. We'll be right back with more of Southeastern Television Wrestling. <laughs> That's right, brother. Wednesday night edition, championship night. I think they got four titles matches. The one I'm interested in is right here in front of me, the Southeastern title. And I hear Mr. Olympio there bumping his gums about El Lobo, who they should call El Hobo after Wednesday night, because you're going to see him with a little sack on his back walking down them railroad tracks by the building. See? <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Olympio again making a hasty retreat to the... Oh! Uh, television man, here it is, Dickie. In the ring for Marietta, Georgia, Bullet Bob Armstrong taking on the latest member of the Midnight Express Incorporated. It's a 25% of himself, Honky Tonk Wayne Ferris. I'll tell you what, he had a tremendous, beautiful robe on. He looks great. He's in great condition. Let's see what he can do in the ring. He can do a lot of damage. Honky Tonk, now opening fire on Bob Armstrong. Well, he likes that Pier 6 type falling and, uh, he picked on the wrong man to, to pier six with. The wrong man. Indeed, the wrong man uh, to pier six with because well, it's Bob can mix it up with the best job. Oh, great connection to the side of the head by Bob Armstrong again. Armstrong starts using the fist. Oh, that took him down. He's down, but not out. Don't call, cut him short. He's part of that. Well, he might be, he might be out now. Part of the Midnight Express, the new, newest member, replacing Norval Lawson, who has dislocated a shoulder. Wayne Ferris going up against the man who's going to be wrestling Harley Race for the world's heavyweight title. Outside the ring, Bob Armstrong and Wayne Ferris, honky tonk, Wayne Ferris. Outside, is pulled outside by Bob. Oh, man, into that corner. Shoulder Close under back in. Bo's trying to come out of here, but he's got him in a sleeper. Oh, my oh. goodness. He caught him with an instrument. Red Star caught him with an That's instrument. Like a black to me. One, two, he's out. He's singing, he's out. Here come the boys. Yeah. Scott and Brad to the rescue. They saw it happen, too. And uh, oh. I don't know if you saw it, Charlie, but Ron Stark came out that back room with a blunt instrument. Looked like a Bob. blackjack or something. Stop, dog it. Man, I tell you what, uh, we got a, the boys up in the ring checking over their father. And we got to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with more of Southeastern Television. We're getting tired of knocking you out. We knocked you out last week. We knocked you out this week. We're going to knock you out the next time and put you in a state of comatose, baby. Because our new man, people thought that Norval Austin was not going to be here. But I tell you what, he's in the sun. Shaden getting him a nice tan back up in old Tennessee up there. And we got a new man right here called Wayne Ferris, honky tonk. Come in and knock you out. <laughs> knock you out like a running light. Well, I'm getting week, tired. Uh, yeah, last, last week we knocked week him out too. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting tired everywhere we look. Everywhere we look, there's curly hair, big, thick glasses, arms yeah. coming from everywhere. We hope your mama don't have curly hair. We hope your grandma don't have curly hair. Because we're getting tired of seeing Armstrong. I think they cloned them somewhere. <laughs> we'll bring them on down. Mobile, Alabama, we'll knock your mama, your grandma, your son, your daddy. We'll knock them all out. Comatose from the honky tonk man. Woo! And, uh, Let me yeah. just say one thing, Charlie Platt. These gentlemen, what a lot of guts it takes to come out three on one. What a lot of guts. Pulling stuff back, stabbing right and left. Curly hair, glass, that's got nothing to do with this. This is professional wrestling, and, and the guts they got, you couldn't put in a thimble. Okay, uh, Brad? Well, I'm going to tell you, Charlie, there's a, a, it's awful, you know, like Scotty said, it's awful fair three-on-one, and I noticed they're awful good at yap-slapping, but I wonder how it's going to be when it's three-on-three -three at jaw-jacking. Bob? Well, I'm just getting real tired. I can imagine. Well, people knocking me out, I guess you can imagine. You ought to be on this end, Charlie. You can really imagine. One thing about it, I've been knocked out enough. I'm going to start to do some jaw jacking and knocking out myself. Now, I don't know what they're using. Whatever it is, is leaving a lot of knots on my head. But it's always a sneak attack. It's like, it's like Pearl Harbor in World War II. It's sneak attack. Now, what are they going to do, all these brave boys, when we get to Mobile and they got to be in the ring, all three of them, with all three of us, 
All at the same time, tornado rules with a no disqualification. I'm going to show them how to put knots on some head. I'm going to show them how to jaw jack and back crack because a mobile bullet and the boys will be there. And... Certainly we see an irate Bob Armstrong, and rightfully so, because I think uh, the bullet has taken all he's going to take from the Midnight Express Incorporated. Speaking of Bob Armstrong, that name is a name to be watching because it's all over the National Wrestling Alliance newsletter for his defeat of Ric Flair uh, for the Southeastern Heavyweight Championship. Bob Armstrong holding on to the title that means. In December, it will be Bob Armstrong, not Ric Flair, meeting Harley Race for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship and certainly... Our congratulations to Bob on that. And this uh, situation with uh, the Armstrongs and the Express heating up even more. 25% goes to Wayne Ferris, and I guess there's a lot of money with this. Uh, right. Strong, and I'm going to get it one way or the other. I'm going to do some jaw jacking and black cracking. Yeah. Honky Tonk, that's what he calls himself, and that's what he displays himself. And I'll tell you what, he's... Uh, a lot of experience in the ring. And certainly uh, in the arena, Dickie, this is going to be a most interesting situation once again. Uh, I've never seen one. I've been asked to remind by the Board of Directors of International Sports right. Incorporated in Southeastern Wrestling and by Mr. Bob Gaggle of the National Wrestling Alliance that this match, when Robert Fuller and Mr. Olympia put on these blindfolds and wrestle in that ring at the arena, it is non-sanctioned. It is not sanctioned by any governing body of professional wrestling. Right. Rip Rogers will return next week, and I'm sure Robert Fuller will be on the TV next week also. And also we see uh, Jacques Rougeau uh, situation. Uh, Jacques coming in uh, to the aid of Robert Fuller is uh, uh, rightfully so. Uh, Jacques friendship and Robert uh, together, very uh, close friendship that goes back a few years. And uh, he has his chance in the arena this week against uh, this El Lobo, the man who sold out to uh, Mr. Olympia for $5,000. Let, let me say something. I didn't mean to step on your toes there. But when a man comes out here on TV and he says, this man is my friend and he has befriended me over the last year, he has never turned his back on me and I'll never turn my back on him. You can count on Mr. Rojo to come to Mr. Fuller's aid. That's right. It's be a lumberjack match. Wrestlers around the ring, and they'll be keeping the participants in this match inside, which will be El Lobo and Jacques Rougeau. A lot of action on today's program. Certainly the situation with uh, Super Olympia, I'm sure not over with. He has a score to settle with Mr. Olympia, obviously. And uh, a lot of action in the arena this week. Make your way down. A lot of action next week on TV. We'll see you then. <laughs> in television wrestling with the screen, instant replay, and other technical firsts. The program voted number one by the Wrestling Writers Federation. Join us now for a fast-paced competition of professional wrestling featuring the top stars from the world's largest governing body, the National Wrestling Alliance. Look out now, Pensacola's got $5,000, a big elimination tag, and bless my soul, before that even happens, I get Mr. Olympia. The mass marvel in a street fight match. I'm going to wear my booty kick and sneakers, sneak up and knock his head clean into the base. It has got real wild lately. He says you've got to have a lot of heart to beat him. He's got no heart at all. Everybody knows what he did to Robert Fuller, a blind man. That takes a real brave man to do that, wouldn't you say? Sure. Well, brother, I can't see too well, but I can see far enough to put the end of my fist on your nose. And before we get into that $5,000 elimination match, that is exactly what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it tomorrow night. World heavyweight champion, nature boy, Ric Flair, sir. The class of professional wrestling who once again is taking time. You keep your mouth shut when I come to the town. You show a little respect. I can't help but you live here. Take advantage of the fact that I'm stopping through. Bob Armstrong, you're on my mind. Now, because you've gone soft because of a couple of snotty-nosed punks, like those two worthless kids of yours, those two juvenile delinquents, it's no fault of mine. You hold the Southeastern Heavyweight Championship, and that daddy is the key, the key to me climbing back in the ring for the World Heavyweight Title Championship match. Harley Race won't wrestle me. He tells me I got to come down here and go through Bob Armstrong because he's one of the leading contenders. Well, right here in Dothan, nothing happened in Dothan. All over the country, if it's Montgomery, Mobile, Birmingham, Charlotte, North Carolina, they tell me I got to beat the Southern 
her Southeastern heavyweight champion, Bob Armstrong. Well, Armstrong, you plan on it, Daddy. Think about it long and hard. There's only one Ric Flair. Woo, there's only one man that the wrestling world evolves around. It's me. And if I got to walk over you, brother, to get that world heavyweight championship back, then you plan on me doing it, and I don't care where it happens. You pass that along to Bobby Armstrong, that is. All right, so you have it. From the Nature Boy, the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, let's get our wrestlers in the ring. We're ready for our main event. I'd like him about her. Introducing from parts unknown, Super Olympia. His opponent from the state of Georgia, Ted Allen. Olympia outweighing uh, Allen all about... Uh, 10 or 12 pounds, Dickie. Side headlock by Allen. Moves his way around into a hammerlock. Well, Chuck, you've been here longer than me. Which uh, Super Olympia is this one? The original one or the, the imposter? It looks got like, two of them, haven't we? I know. It looks like the original to me. I don't know. Uh, good takedown by Super. Oh, uh, Allen pushes his man back. Does not... Uh, off of his feet, fireman carry take down. Uh, I guess you call it a super fireman carry take yep. down, Charlie. He kind of had both feet flat on the ground and rolled his man over. Standing wrist lock now by the original Super O. Spin off from Mr. Olympia. This is uh, a man of the same size, same structure, same muscular development. Using the same kind of mass. Dragon Jeff definitely is not Jerry Stubbs. It's Super Olympia. Whoever he may be. And um, whatever happened, Charlie, there was a controversy a couple of weeks ago when the other gentleman showed up and and he wrestled and then this one came out there and says, no, I'm the original one. Any word on that yet? There is some still some controversy about uh, Super Olympia. And uh, some of it involves a recent uh, Southeastern Heavyweight Championship match with uh, Bob Armstrong. We'll be bringing you up to date on that a little bit later on in today's program. Some nice maneuvers there with a fireman's carry again, taking his man down. I will say this thing I found out, and it's not been mentioned, but a $600 fine has been uh, levied on Mr. Olympia for some of the tactics he has done in this area in the last few weeks. I got that notice up in the mailbox upstairs, shall we? $600 he had to pay. Yes, he doesn't care. He's got that money to burn. Look at this. Going for the pin. Allen says no, and Allen throws the weight forward and uh, possibly a save pin there, Dickie. Certainly was. It was a sunset flip coming up, and he turned the tables. Boy, that little fella can lay him in hard. Look at him pounding that chest. Allen looking very effective against Super O. Oh, good elbow. Knocks the big man down, too. Don't cut this uh, this Allen short. No, sir. He's tough. Tough little fella. Oh, I don't mean to say little. I hope he doesn't. <laughs> but 205 or 8 pounds is uh, it's, it's a big it's a big size, for, especially for a junior heavyweight. He's got the advantage over a Super Olympia at this time. Looking him in the corner. Boy, those turnbuckles hurt, too. Caught hard uh, at the hands of Ted Allen. Allen going right in, continuing to work on uh, Super Olympia. Again into the turnbuckle. Good takedown coming off and down for the pin. Two count, and Super Olympia powers out. Ted Allen moving very effectively against Super Olympia. Uh, Super Olympia needing to gain some momentum in this match. Snapmare takedown right to that chin lock. And uh, once again, Allen's controlling this match, Dickie. Uh, congratulations to director Wayne Richardson for calling such good maneuvers off his cameraman. I guess he's he's been at it a long time. He knows just when they're going to hit that turnbuckle. More for the pleasure of the wrestling fans to witness it at good camera angles. Allen still pressing the advantage of a Super Olympia. And uh, continue to work his man over in that turnbuckle right to the side of the head. Olympia uh, fires one back, though. Allen dazed. Uh, again, Olympia comes in with a left to the midsection. 
All right, I just noticed something there, Charlie. This uh, Super Olympia is left-handed, and the other man who uh, imitated him a few weeks back right. was right-handed. Right. So at least we've got our eye on it. Body slam. Oh. Drops that knee across the chest. Same way as world heavyweight champion Harley Race, one of his favorite maneuvers. Resistance front suplex. Watch this one. That's it. Crashing down has Allen locked up, and it's over. Even though Allen put his knees in the place of uh, his body, he absorbed the shock a little bit more. He still wasn't able to get out of that winner over that contest of Super Olympia. Certainly, when you've got a man the size of Allen and the weight of Super Olympia crashing down with it, it's going to slow that man down regardless of what he uses as a problem. Well, he, he used feet or whatever. Well, he